I'm Noah Bradley, and today we're going to talk about practicing and how much you should practice, uh, specifically talking to artists, but I guess this kind of works for just about any creative field. Uh, the lessons are all about the same. So yeah, um, how much should you practice? I, it's, it's a really weird question because it depends. It depends on a lot of things. But I guess what I'm going to talk about today is how to think about how much you should practice rather than give you, here's how much you should practice. Um, so you should practice exactly as much as you need to, to meet your goals. And I'll talk about goal setting some other time. Uh, I've got some other videos on here, uh, specifically in the creators chat stuff that goes into goals and what makes a good goal and a bad one and figuring out what those are. But that's a really important part of how much you should practice. Because if your goal is to just have fun with art and you have no career aspirations for this or anything like that, you don't have to practice that much. You, you can practice as much as you want to. Uh, if you feel like practicing one day, sure, great. Uh, if you don't, sure, great. Uh, that's fine. Whereas if your goal is, you know, I need to be professional and supporting my family within two years, uh, suddenly that changes the equation a little bit. Suddenly you have to put in some hours. Suddenly, depending on where you're at and where you want to be, you might have to put in a lot of hours. So figuring out what your goals are is an essential step to figuring out how much you need to practice uh, and how much you should practice. So figure out what that is. Is, is your goal to get good really fast or is your goal to have fun or somewhere in between there? And figure out what that is. Uh, if you're, you know, you don't mind keeping at an amateur level or something, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Art is fantastic no matter where you're at on that skill level. And I, I don't judge anyone for that. Uh, there's a lot of downsides to going professional at this stuff. Whereas if you do want to go professional at it, uh, that's also great. And you're going to need to put in a lot of hours though. Uh, it's important to remember that everyone else is putting in a lot of hours to get professional and the quality of work you need to hit to start getting those professional jobs is really, really high. So it is going to be a lot of practice. Um, so all that said, uh, there's a lot of also confusion about just pure hours and how valuable they are. So if you look at something like the 10,000 hour rule, um, not all hours are created equal. Uh, you can put in 10,000 hours and still be terrible. Uh, maybe not terrible, but pretty bad. Uh, because not all hours are equal. Uh, some hours are more effective practice than others. And I'm probably going to make some other videos about how to effectively practice. Um, but definitely some of my tutorials and stuff go into, all right, here is an example of effective studying versus ineffective studying. So that's something to really think about is that you might be putting in, you know, 10 hours a day, but nine of those hours might be pretty much just wasted. Uh, they're not going to be teaching you anything. So thinking about uh, a few of the things that um, kind of define ineffective practicing. Uh, one of them I see all the time uh, from beginners is just finishing work constantly. They're obsessed with, they need to learn how to finish work. And frankly, that's not usually the problem. The problem is, is that they're really just polishing turds. Uh, if you don't have a good start to a piece, learning how to finish it is not that important. And so a lot of people waste a lot of hours just sinking their time into these pieces that they should honestly probably just move on from. Um, you know, there's no hard and fast rule and there's obviously some value to be gained from learning how to finish stuff. But I'll say that most people, most of the time, their problem is not how to finish something. It's how to start something well. So. I'd say to start more pieces and then finish a few of them. Uh, I think you're probably gonna be better off doing that. Uh, another one that gets people all the time is copying mindlessly. This happens a ton. Uh, when people do studies, they think that all they gotta do is copy what they're seeing. Uh, that's not right because if all you're doing is just copying mindlessly, you're not learning. Uh, you need to be there, you need to be conscious, you need to be thinking about what you're drawing, why you're drawing it a certain way, making decisions all the time. 
um, you can trace and have it be an effective study and you can draw, you know, from life and have it be an ineffective study. It's all about kind of your mind and your thought process and what you're paying attention to and what you're getting out of it. So I am all about conscious practicing and you've got to be there. You've got to be present and you've got to be thinking about stuff. Um, another thing that people screw up is they just either repeat the same mistakes or they repeat the same successes. And both of these have a lot of problems. So if you're just repeating the same successes, if you're drawing the same things you already know how to draw, that's fine, but it's probably not teaching you very quickly because you already know how to do that at a certain level. And that's, that's great. And it's above everything else you can do, but it's not teaching you new things unless you're actively pushing yourself. You're not really learning. Um, every bit of growth and learning has some amount of discomfort to it. It's not a comfortable thing. If you go to the gym and all you're doing is having an easy time and you're just lifting lightweight stuff that you can do and you've done before, you're not going to grow. You're not going to you know, achieve your goals. And the same goes with art and every other creative field. If there's not some level of discomfort there, not enough to be miserable because that's also bad. That'll burn you out creatively or kill you uh, physically. Uh, there's all kinds of bad stuff. So don't do that. Um, but yeah, uh, so thinking about that and then thinking about repeating mistakes, that's also a really bad one. Um, if you're repeating mistakes and you're not correcting them, you're just digging these deep grooves of bad habits that you're going to have to fix later on. And fixing bad habits is really, really hard. It's much harder than learning something correctly the first time. And so I see this happen with a lot of people where they will just keep repeating these same mistakes and they won't take the time to step back and think, okay, I need to work on this. Uh, they might even notice that it's not as good as the rest of their stuff. Maybe they're just drawing the same eyes every single time, but they've never really studied eyes, but whatever, it's fine. I'll just keep drawing the same eyeball. That's not going to teach you anything good. It's going to teach you some bad stuff. It's going to teach you really bad habits. So you want to get out of there. When you notice that you're just repeating a formula or you're just doing that because you always do it that way, that's a time to take a step back and be like, okay, I need to, I need to figure out how to do this better. I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong and make sure I don't keep doing it in the future. So that's another case where more hours, not necessarily a good thing. Maybe fewer hours, but more effective hours are better. Um, so yeah, let's get on to actually how much I do. So for me, a three hour creative day is fantastic. That's it. Three hours. Uh, it's not an eight hour day. I'm very happy if I do three hours of focused creative work a day. Uh, that's fantastic. And obviously some people are not going to have that much time in their day. They've got, they've got jobs, they got responsibilities, they got family, they got all this other stuff going on. Maybe they only have an hour a day. Also great. An hour a day of super effective studying can teach you a ton, like a ton. You can learn a lot in an hour a day. Um, if you have less than that, things are going to get a little bit trickier. Um, half an hour a day is still going to teach you. It's still going to teach you a lot. It's going to take longer to get the results you want, obviously, but it's still good. As long as you're taking that half an hour and you're shutting out distractions and you're super focused on stuff, you don't want to spend half an hour a day of just mindlessly copying because guess what? You're not going to learn anything. Uh, it's not good practice. So you want 30 minutes, an hour, three hours of really good practice. And that's, that's what I want to drill home is that the hours are great and all, but they're not necessarily telling the whole story. Um, so yeah, I do about three hours a day and I'm thrilled whenever I do three hours, three hours is a solid creative day. Um, I find that usually on my like most extreme productive times, I'm hitting maybe six hours. After six hours, everything just goes downhill. Uh, and usually I break up that six hours into two, three hour chunks, like one early in the morning and then one kind of in the afternoon. And that's what works best for me. You'll find what works best for you is probably different. Um, but after six hours of creative work, I'm just burned out. I just, I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not going to do really good work. I'm not going to work effectively. And while it's not necessarily a waste of time to do more than that, if I don't have to, I probably won't. 
because it's probably not the best idea. Uh, that said, obviously, when I was back in art school, I did more than six hours a day. Uh, there were a lot of times when I was doing eight, 10, 12, I mean, 14 hours a day occasionally. Uh, and it was fine. Obviously it, it taught me a lot and I learned a ton, but do I, looking back, do I think that that was the best way to go about it? Um, probably not. I probably could have learned the same or more, uh, if I had been more focused on doing really effective practicing and less time, just doing random stuff or mindlessly finishing or copying or something like that. Uh, if I had taken those hours, reduced them down and done really effective studying, I probably could have learned more faster. So yeah, uh, so that kind of wraps it up. So you can study as much as you need to or want to, uh, depending on what your goals look like. And hopefully this is giving you some context to think about that it's not just as black and white as you might think it is. Like, just because you're working three hours a day, for instance, doesn't mean you're going to improve at the rate you want to. For instance, you might be doing that three hours and that feels solid, but you're still not seeing that improvement. In that case, you might want to look at how you're practicing. And I'm probably going to do an entire video just on like how to practice and how not to practice, because there's a lot to think about for that stuff too. I just wanted to talk about how much to practice. And for me, I think three hours is great. Uh, but find out what works for you. If you can push that to four hours, fantastic. If you're, you know, full-time single parent and you've got a job and everything else, you know, if you can squeeze in half an hour, that's fantastic. And you can learn a ton. Um, so, uh, just some thoughts on this kind of stuff. Hopefully this has helped. Um, yeah. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, subscribe if you feel like it and, uh, yeah. Thanks for everything. I appreciate it. And I will see you next time.